Thomas Manton IV on Spiritual Covering, Volume 4. The Lord's been talking to me all this week about <clears throat> this very important topic, and I'm really thinking about how people in the body of Christ are not blessed enough. And I want to say this a little bit radically from the outset. Not because they're not in the body of Christ, but because they're not attached to the anointing. The anointing is paramount. Isaiah 10, 27, it's the only way the yoke will be destroyed and the burden removed from off your shoulder and the yoke taken off your neck. And, and all of that destroyed because of the anointing. Isaiah 60 says, arise and shine for your light has come. We are to be light. Jesus said, you're salt and light. And if you're not, then the world can't be lit up and things can't be preserved and blessed because the salt has lost its savor. It's a, it's a natural analogy for spiritual reality. A natural analogy for spiritual reality. Now, in Revelation, Jesus said one place, if you're lukewarm, I'll, I'll cast you out, I'll spew you out, I'll hurl you out, I'll get rid of you. So let's just look at what God likes and what he doesn't like. He said, I'd rather you be hot or cold. I don't know why he'd rather us be cold than lukewarm. Luke, you know, you feel warm as a little bit. Okay, but really what it is, it's like you're, you, you have an attitude problem. You're not on fire because you, you just think it's okay to be complacent. And God's not okay with that. Anything he says he doesn't like, he killed Ananias and Sapphira because they lied in his presence and stole the money. He didn't like that. He didn't like Moses hitting the rock. He didn't like it. In fact, he killed Moses after that, took him off the scene and said, now Joshua, son of Nun, you go. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now you arise, Joshua. Joshua wanted you go. But Joshua was blessed, watch this now, because he was connected to the pipeline that Moses had in his glory. Now Moses was not a bad guy. The episode he had at the end and the time he killed the Egyptian, he was enraged rage with passion because those Egyptians were abusing the Israel, the Israelites, the Hebrews. So he got mad. Hey, David killed people, he got mad. But God said, yet he's a, he's a man after his own heart. But Moses was great. The scripture says when he was 120, his eye was not dim nor his strength abated. He was strong and healthy and powerful. Caleb was strong and healthy and powerful. So was Joshua. Why? Because they were of another order. What was it? They were tapped into the grace of the anointing. You see, people think that they can make it on their own and, and it's not right. I found a scripture in uh, 2 Chronicles 26, verse 1, it talked about, uh, let me turn there, I'll get back to Isaiah 60. Let me go to 2 Chronicles. Glad I'm moving real fast here already. Okay. Uzziah took place. And then the fifth verse said, He sought the Lord in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in visions of in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. As long, 2 Chronicles 26, verse 5. As long as he sought the Lord, the Lord made him to prosper. How did that happen? How do we seek God today? You seek God yourself in prayer. And all of that, as I'm always doing around the clock, always <clears throat> meditating on the things of God, learning, studying. I spend many hours of every day reading and studying and looking at things and meditating on things. Many, many hours of every day of my life, seven days a week. I never stop. And, uh, but then you got to tap the grace of something, which I, I want to speak about further here far as divine relationships, spiritual covering. If you're, if you're under a donkey, of, uh, it's a bad analogy, of a, a person who's really not doing much, I don't mean to liken anybody to an animal, but you know what I mean, nothing much is going on there, then uh, 
You're just going to have the nature of that beast operating in your midst. But if you get into something where the glory of God is moving, oh, now you're in a different arena. And the Lord is really talking to me about that all this week. We need to tap the grace of the fire of God. We need to look for people that know what they're doing. We need to be in the company of skilled people. See, divine relationships are smart relationships. You, you have to be in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the presence of somebody great if you want to walk in greatness. You want to be successful. My, new, my book is going to reprint. Get the title. It's called Prophetic Keys of Successful Living. It's being printed by a major man of God who's offered to publish two of my books and pay for all of it and print thousands of copies. Thank you, Bishop. I love you. And, and oh, God's going to do something new for you for, for being honoring to me. I'm thrilled. And another expanded edition. The cover will change. The interior will change. And I'm adding a lot more to this book. This is also going to be published also. The Laws of Success. Okay, you want to be successful, you have to understand something about it. You want to prosper, you have to understand something about prosperity. As long as he sought the Lord, the Lord made him to prosper. Isaiah 60 talked about somebody. See, the thing is, it didn't say who he was talking to when he said, arise and shine. Did, did, he, say it? did he say the name of anybody there? No. Isaiah 45 starts out in the first verse talking about the anointed Cyrus breaking open the gates and, and, and the anointing did that, okay? But then it goes on to say, I'll give you treasures of darkness and even of hidden riches and even from hidden places, secret places. And watch this. He says, by this you'll know that I'm the Lord your God who even calls you by your own name. But guess what? When he said the word name, he didn't say Cyrus again. Which tells me we can put ourselves into that equation. Third John 2, John said to Gaius, but there's only one Gaius there. What about everybody else? To the well-beloved Gaius, who I love in the truth, I wish and desire and pray above all things that you prosper, being healthy, even as your soul prospers. The Lord told me years ago, decades ago, in fact, so long ago, I can't tell you how many years, like ancient of days of time. <laughs> Someone said, prophet, what's your age? I don't tell. So, well, I'm younger than Methuselah. He lived to 969. Even Moses lived to 120. I'm a little, still younger than him, a little bit. And I'm a little, few minutes more older than a millennial person who was born in 2000. Plus, millennial <clears throat> is 22 years old or younger. Now, if you... If you, if you hit the end of 99, you're not a millennial. A millennial starts in 2000. So if someone's born after 2000, from January 1, 2000 onward, you're a millennial. And that wasn't my experience, so I'm in between the two. Uh, anytime I ask someone to guess, they always say a number that's about 20 years younger than the real number. But age is a number, as they say, right? I don't use the O word in my vocabulary. We don't use that around here. Not planning to be that. Not in any way looking forward to anything like that. So, arise and shine. That's an offer that God made. He said, you will become radiant with light. I want to give you a homework assignment. I can't do it like... Uh, Justice to read through all the verses right here in this setting, but I want you to read the whole Isaiah 60 and meditate in it verse by verse and put yourself into that equation. Now, one thing I came to learn was on the last Sunday, one, one thing I came to learn was covenant connection with someone who's anointed empowers you to prosper and succeed. Write that down. Covenant connection with someone who's anointed. And usually people that are really anointed are also into prosperity. I, I'll just tell you what I've, I've experienced. Anybody that says they're not into prosperity, there's something wrong with them. And they're not really very anointed by the Holy Ghost, if at all. They, they might know Jesus, and I couldn't argue with their salvation experience. However, 
People that I know that are filled with the Holy Ghost, they understand prosperity. Even Billy Graham had to touch on a God on his life, but he never taught about healing. He never prophesied. He never taught about prosperity. He wasn't a teacher. He was a pure soul winning evangelist. He was true to his calling. But in his own life, believe you me, he knew, he knew something about prosperity. His ministry was walking. I don't know if they passed a billion dollars in their ministry. They might have. I think they had. Yeah, actually they did. And all the years he's preaching, I'm sure in the billions of dollars came into his organization to do all his crusades and all that. If he didn't believe that and, and know that that was necessary, how would he do it? So the anointing will be symbolic with power, miracles, and wealth. Let's go back to Revelation 5.12. Revelation 5.12 says, Jesus received back, you know, power and riches and wisdom and strength and blessing, glory, and honor. Did Jesus need it in heaven? Does Jesus need an offering? Does he need riches? Does he need power? Does he need wisdom? No, he has it all. He is because he's God. So what did he do that for? He did it for us. <laughs> if we could only catch a hold of this. So I thought about so many people. Now, further on in... Second Chronicles 26. We'll go back there a second. And the uh, the 19th verse, the heading in the New King in my New King James Bible says, there was a penalty, the penalty for Uzziah's pride. And you could read that. Second Chronicles 26, you could read the whole thing. I'm reading it like heaven's news, briefly to the point and making points, but I, I don't feel uh, the setting I'm in, I could read through all the verses, verse by verse, but you read that, the penalty for Uzziah's pride. Let me tell you, Uzziah's pride is still in the church. A lot of people think they could do things themselves. or they're wounded, or they're rejected, or they're messed up, and they don't want to work with anybody, they don't want to reach for anybody, so yet somebody's a receptacle of God's glory, and then people don't want to reach for it. Something wrong with that equation. Why? You don't like the way a person looks, you don't like their ethnicity. When I see glory, I go past ethnicity. In fact, I don't give a, a, a flying... helicopter ride or whatever you'd want to say about where you're from or how you look if you have the glory in your life I want to tap that grace I heard one of the greatest apostles who's become a connected person with me now and this kind of that kind of triggered this series of, of messages this week and now I'm in volume four. You know, I thought I'd move into something else here today. The Lord said, no, all night in the morning, he was telling me, stay on this. Volume four. Because people need to understand about two things. Spiritual covering, which is part of it, but that's a limited part of it. And divine relationships. If you don't have the right connections, the right environment, the right things, you don't have the right solutions. If you don't have the right brilliance and creativity working, with you and for you and in you, you're not going to have the right results. Don't say amen. That's not a place for you. Can you say amen? No, these amen means so be it. Don't say oh no. <laughs> Don't say amen, say oh no. No, 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 not for me. So this man who's built the largest church building on planet Earth right now, he's an epitome of excellence and success and the glory of the anointing in his life like like nobody else uh, I'm telling you and we had a divine encounter about well I guess it's going on five weeks ago now and the Lord brought in ten minutes from where I am on two private jets his staff on one and his wife and daughter and maybe his couple of key protocol uh, work, you know, friends close people on one jet 
And they've hired another jet to come over across the continent. And I was supposed to meet him in London. I was supposed to meet him in Houston, Texas. I was supposed to meet him in London, England. Our schedules didn't permit. My schedule didn't permit for me to be there at that time. So the Lord spoke to me one day and says, now I'm bringing this ma my, my servant 10 minutes from where you are. Is that OK? I, I, I almost started crying. I was like, what do you mean, is it OK? Yes, I'm so grateful. And the Lord said, go there in the morning, early. Get there. I didn't know what I was walking into. I had a divine encounter with this great, with a, one of the greatest generals alive in our generation. So he made a statement that I really like. He said, I can learn from anybody. I feel this way too. He said, I can learn from anybody. He said, I don't care who God uses to get me to my destiny. I just have to get there. He said, because of pride and arrogance, a lot of people miss their thing. Look at Uzziah here, 2 Chronicles 26, verse 19. Uzziah was proud and lost it. God gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. He resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. You need to humble yourself in the sight of the Lord so he'll lift you up. Isaiah 57, 15 is very powerful where it says, uh, a broken and a contrite spirit I'll not despise. A humble, in other words, a humble person, someone that knows they have a need and they're going to go after something. One of the biggest mistakes, and this is in volume four of this message about revelations regarding spiritual covering and divine relationships, volume four, that's what I'm doing right now. One of the biggest mistakes people make, and it grieves me too about myself, is we don't reach enough for people. You need to reach. I'm tell, I don't want to swear because the Bible said don't swear, you know, like you I don't know what the word is, like, just, just, in other words, just do it. Don't, don't talk about it or make a big pronouncement about it. Just do it. And I tell you, I want to say I swear, but I swear like an oath. I'm going to have whole departments in my organization, in my ministry, operations, just one of them very vast, just dedicated to correspondence with people. I want to talk to thousands of people. I want to give a phone call, phone tree, message, whatever you want to call it. I want people to represent me, and it's going to happen. So many people you lose touch with. You know, those are gold, golden relationships, golden connections. They're like, they're like jewels. And we're missing them. Because we don't talk to people. Hey, you live in your own world, you do your own schedule, the people that are around you. And it's sometimes, let me just say it as, I, as my true New York self, some people around you are just a bunch of idiots. You're in the midst of fools and you, you, you tolerate it. You look around, I, I'll prove it to you. Do this analysis for yourself and get smart and get wisdom. Solomon said, get wisdom and with it, get understanding. Get some wisdom and understanding. Isaiah 11, 2 talks about the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation and the spirit of understanding and counsel and might and the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord will push you to want to do the things that he's ordained you to do because we don't have a lot of time, you know? We don't have unlimited time. We have limited time. So he's got to get busy. Do this analysis and look at every... Hey, Listen to God's prophet here. If that sounded like a strong statement, yeah, it is, because I want to provoke people, but I want to tell the truth. I want, the truth is the truth. Look at everybody in your world around you and, 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 and analyze them and see if they're brilliant enough to be your helper, your worker, your advisor, your coach, your, even your servant or protege or mentor. Tilt, boom, boom shakalaka, just blew up the tank. Power just went off. You say, oh my God, Lord, look at the people around me. Look at what I tolerate. Sometimes in your own house, Jesus didn't come to bring peace with the, uh, uh, the existing people around you. He said, I come to bring a sword. I'll divide two from three and three from two. 
Remember when the, the, the scripture also says the day he comes, one will be left and one will be taken. Jesus doesn't care about the things like we so care about them. Those of your own house can also be foes instead of good friends. I know. Boy, some relatives, you think if you had to hang around them every day, you'd lose your mind. Here's another thing. If you can survive your family growing up, you can survive your calling. If you can survive your family. Jesus' own people in the hometown of Nazareth says, oh, what is this, some work, miracle worker now? Oh, you're the Messiah. Sure, uh-huh, yeah. And he said, and the scripture says because of his, their unbelief, he couldn't do anything there except pray for, lay hands on a few sick folk and minor ailments, whatever. Then he went to Capernaum where the people thronged him because the fame of the glory that was upon him, people knew about it and the whole town got stirred up, the whole region. And they came and miracles happened, signs of wonders, cl lepers cleansed, dead raised, blind seeing, deaf hearing, cripples walking. Come on. But in Nazareth, it could, Nazareth, it couldn't happen. Mark chapter six. Jesus could there do no mighty works in Nazareth because of their unbelief. Didn't say he wouldn't, because he tried, save or accept to lay his hands on a few sick folk and heal them of some minor ailments or whatever. And he had to leave, smart. He had to even leave his disciples to go to the mountain alone to pray. <clears throat> and go somewhere and pray to be with the Father. That's how he got empowered. Then the, then the Lord would start showing him things. The Father would start showing him things. And he would uh, then repeat what he saw. He would tell what he saw and he would repeat what was said to him by the Father in prayer. He didn't get that from man. So, of course, first divine relationship is yours with God. No question about that. The Word covers us. The blood covers us. The Holy Ghost definitely covers us. But if you want to exceed in life and climb the ladder into greater things, you got to step up into the right connections. Ha! Ah, I don't understand it fully and I have a lot of regrets about it. I feel very disturbed about it. The fact that when we looked to certain people and thought that they were good, and they're good because they're, they're people that are of, I'm talking about in the kingdom, in the church, people that are of God, men of God, that you know, but they don't care about you. You can't hang around them and their disregard for you. It's like, it's like you're sitting there thinking like, believe in me, accept me, endorse me, and they don't do it because they have something else in their mind for whatever their persuasion or prejudice is about particular people. And everybody will have their cronies, you know, even a man of God who's full of the fire of God will have his like uh, select group of people that he really likes, but it may not be you. <laughs> Everybody that's coming on, God bless you. Glad you're here. Listen up. The Lord is really making this clear to me. So when you have favor and there's glory there, you got to tap that grace. And woe unto you if you don't take advantage of it. I don't mean take advantage of it in a bad way. I mean make use of the opportunity. And the Lord spoke to me this morning again and said, Say this today, people are not getting what I have for them because they're not connected. The disconnect disconnects them from the blessings. I'm gonna prove it to you. Rough riding here, let's go on the, you know, you see the, the mule and the donkey and the horses and the carriage going through the western terrain over the rocks and valleys and hills and mountains. And, you know, rough, rough ride. Let's go on the rough ride. Let's get on the horse, the fast horse and gallop. Let me take you somewhere. Get on the camels by the beach on the coast and let them take you and hit them where they'll run and get a rough ride, you know? Let's go on the real ride somewhere. <clears throat> There's a certain man of God in America who became a pilot when he was young and he was serving Oral Roberts. And uh, he became Oral Roberts' pilot. 
And his name was Kenneth Copeland. Today, Oral Roberts is heaven, in heaven, and uh, Kenneth Copeland's in his 80s, and he's the richest preacher in America. Unless somebody's more rich in business, but they don't want to tell anybody, that's possible. But as far as ministry proceeds, Kenneth Copeland is nearly a billionaire, U.S. dollars. I think they said he's worth about $750 million personally, and it could be more than that. How did he get there? The laws of, the laws of biblical economics, the laws of prosperity. Working it, teaching people it. Now guess what? He's given away almost 30 airplanes. Last I heard it was 26, but that was a couple of years ago, a few years back he gave the number, so it might be more than 30 now, I don't know. 30 aircraft he not only has had, he's given away. I know one woman of God in Uganda who I preach for, Prophetess Amelda in Kampala, Uganda, big church, huge church. Now her, her, her car count is 246. She's given away 246 cars. Not she has 246 cars, she's given away 246 cars. She sees, she sees a pastor who's doing the work. She finds a car, or she takes one of her cars and gives it to him. Imagine. And, she's, and she was giving away houses and all that. They really got into that flow. And uh, uh, God used me to raise an uh, offering in the millions for them, and they built their big dome seating thousands of people on like 40 acres of land between Kampala and Entebbe. And um, the phenomenal testimony. So I, I, I people asking me to come back. I need to go back and see my, the, the prophecy God used me to speak, uh, fulfilled. It said the roof cost 700,000 dollars a part of the structure and a lot of that money was what came in the offering when I was there the Sunday morning when I challenged 12 people to come to the altar to sow 10 million all 12 came and I think just about all of them gave the money Several times I've been to churches and the, and the pastor would come back with a, with a letter from their accounting department with a shocked look on their face and say, would you like to see this? And they'd even write letters, like official letters to give to me, say, it, one in 30 years, another one in 21 years of ministry, he said, it's the largest offering ever received in the history of their church. And God always did it on a Sunday morning in one meeting. Even if I was doing several meetings there, it was always the Sunday morning church service of their church that I was speaking at where that phenomenon happened. So that's happened several times. I could name three. One was in Copenhagen, Denmark. The other was in Nairobi, Kenya. And the other was in uh, Kampala, Uganda. That's just three. But that's happened in many places. Why? Because of the anointing. Was it good for them to have me? Yeah. Was it a divine connection? Absolutely. But a lot of times what happens is we don't follow up enough because people get too busy. And then some people get in this thing called pride, like they're doing their thing and they don't always reach out or it's just not their norm or they're busy doing other things. It's not good. You have to make time. If you want something that's brilliant and available, you have to make time to go after it. Otherwise, how are you going to get it? Isaiah 60, again, was a place where it just 
didn't mention anybody's name, said, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Who's that person? It's me. I put myself into that equation. One thing you want to do is personalize scripture. Put yourself in there. To the well-beloved Thomas Manton IV, 3 John 2. Beloved Thomas Manton IV, I wish, pray, and desire. Wish is New King James, New King James is pray. New, New International Version says desire. I wish, pray, and desire above everything else that you prosper and be in good health. Yeah. Even as your soul prospers. Yeah. Wow. Soul prosperity, health prosperity, financial prosperity, material prosperity. Whoa, Lord. That's God's desire for us. Anybody God cuts a covenant with is going to be blessed with what? With land, with property, with all kinds of things. Part of the covenant. Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 to 14. We need to read that again. See, that right there is Psalm 2. Why do the heathen rage and imagine a vain thing? Watching soccer. I think it's kind of gay to watch a guy with his short pants on running around kicking a white ball. What are you looking at? His legs? What are you looking at? The ball? You're looking at and the other guy comes and tries to... To me... Sorry to say, I, I don't want to trash your sacred sport, but I don't have even, I don't, I don't have any minutes. I don't, I, wrestling could be a little bit exciting. Boxing, eh. American football, eh, for a few minutes. Baseball, not really. Basketball, never liked it much. Never thought it was any, of any value. You know, I don't get entertained by it. I like to watch nonfiction business stories. I like to watch an action movie once in a while or a really super intellectual, intriguing drama series once in a while. But most of the time I like watching the anointing movie and listening to the Word of God. And then people that are very successful in business talking about concepts of ideas. I just watched one video last night was, that said uh, why Twitter will become a trillion dollar company. And this one guy's assessment, he was, he was on it, he was on it. It, it, it had a lot, of, a lot of wisdom there. And with the new boss, wow. And then he wants to go after other media networks. Let him do it in Jesus' name. He has the money, let him do it. Take it back. There's still yet hope for things to turn around, but you got to work with greatness. Our beloved president, number 45, he's running again now to be number 47. So be it. <laughs> In Jesus' mighty name. He said, when you, if you want to be successful in anything, you got to start from the perspective that you're great. And if you're not great at it, and you're not greatly in love with it, or passionate about it, you shouldn't do it. A lot of people start businesses, and if you were to, were to ask them why, they think it's to make money or whatever. You don't start a business to make money. You don't go into the ministry because it's like, you think it's a noble venture. You do based on obedience to the Lord's calling. Like, what, everything I do, I don't do it to get paid. It's not like a job for me, it's my calling. So money and resources supernaturally flow because how else are you gonna do everything? And more is coming, I'm prophesying here. More is coming now than we've ever seen in our life. And we're in that moment right now where God is releasing it. I've been praying and I used this week the glory that's upon my new apostle friend who I'm connecting with 
spiritual connection, spiritual covering, spiritual grace, empowerment, because he's walking in that realm. And I was praying all Friday night in the all night prayer till 8.30 in the morning. And I thought, I have appointments from 11 something. So I, I gotta sleep two hours. I can't just go to the, into the day without having slept. I mean, I guess I could if I wanna torture myself. So the good two hours of sleep I had was great. Then I had two, three very powerful appointments. And one of them later on was a situation where only God can fix it and put it together. And the other ones too, the, other, the, the second and the third one. First one was just a natural thing I had to do at a certain time. And the other two, it was glorious. Solutions, big solutions. Why? Because I'm tapped into the grace of God and not just of myself, but people that are carrying the glory. Now, I have to say this one more time. Last Sunday, seven days ago from today, feels like it's a month already because I have such an intense week. Every week, it's like it's one Sunday to the next. It doesn't feel like a week. It feels like a month because so much happened in, in the week. It, it just happens. It, this is, happens all the time. It feels like that regularly. I thought that was last Sunday, just one Sunday ago. Wow, it feels like it's longer. So the Lord had me speak on Sunday as a foundational text, and I'm continuing in a little bit here. Last Sunday about Isaiah 60, arise and shine, for your light is coming, the glory of the Lord is risen upon you, though gross darkness covers the earth. Don't worry about it. Side note, don't worry about it. Just keep at it, keep going. And deep darkness, the people. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes, verse four, all round about and see how they gather together and they come to you. Your sons will come from afar. <laughs> and your daughters will be nursed at your side. Wow. And you will see and become radiant, even more radiant. Your heart will swell with joy, not your natural heart, your spiritual heart. Because of the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you and the wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. The multitudes of camels shall cover your land. My God, the dromedaries, which I think was the different breeds of camels or the smaller ones, whichever it was. The Midi of Midian and where? Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. Sheba was the one who came to see Solomon. Remember this venue, because I hate this lighting here. I'll break that light bulb if I could, but I can't. This is a one-off. I think I did this venue before, but I'm not too thrilled. It's very noisy here, too. The, lot, the place is swarming with people, which is okay. I like people. But as to the decibel level, which is not so great, but all those from Sheba will come. Isaiah was a book that was after Kings and after Solomon in the order that it was. We can look up the years. When was David walking the earth? When was Solomon walking the earth? When was Isaiah walking the earth? We should study that. Let's find out. What was the year BC that David was around and Solomon and then Isaiah? Was Isaiah a century later? Well, in book form, in the books of the Bible, it was later, and he mentioned Sheba, but Sheba was the royal powerful queen who was rich, the queen of Sheba, who came to see Solomon, and when she saw everything that he had, she passed out. Slain in the spirit, fainted, overwhelmed emotionally, all the above, maybe two, and just went, 
boom, needed an usher to catch her and lay her down. She couldn't handle what she saw. Why? Because De Solomon was walking in the grace of his father. I heard a testimony this morning from this apostle, this new, new apostle friend, who I'm now connected with. Connecting with, connecting with. And the Lord had me speak these four words. I want to connect. I must connect. I want to connect. I kept saying it. He's the Holy Ghost. And he's like, good. He says, you, you come into the conference. And I, as I said yesterday, I couldn't, I couldn't make it this last week, but I'll go to the, another one in the coming new year as soon as I can. Because I've just got too much going on on the side of things over here right now. I just, not that I wouldn't, I wanted to, but I just couldn't, you know, for a lot of things happening right now over here that I'm very involved with, so I just couldn't get away right now to go there. But I, I was able to tune in online, wow, and experience the meeting that way. And then what's great about the internet video, you can replay and go catch up days later, but you gotta, you, you know, you gotta play with the settings a little bit to try to go into the page and go back and find them in order. Sometimes it's a little bit challenging, but you gotta push yourself to do it. And watch through all those hours of the glory of God flowing in the midst of tens of thousands of people. Guess what? He told me face to face on Friday night, the all night prayer, that they're going to end the conference with. He said the place will be full, completely full. He wasn't kidding. I watched the video. There wasn't a seat in the place. And this his church seats 100,000 people. There's 100,000 seats in that church, and they were all full. Two balconies, the whole floor, all the way around as far as you can go. The cameras, the video guys were going through the whole place, and the whole place was jammed full, completely full, 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 full to capacity. Who has a, who has a Friday night all night prayer? Kenya, they call it a Keisha, whatever that means. Keisha, like, Keisha means tomorrow. Keisha, I, I don't know, all night prayer. And you got 100,000 people there? And they do that kind of stuff all the time. I think they arranged it was the last Friday of the month, so probably the last Friday of the month is the time when everybody's gonna come, and then he ends the conference on that night. And like four or five in the morning, I'm telling you, the power of God was flowing, and he got into this thing about wealth, which thrilled me, because I was waiting for that. And he didn't do it the whole week. Very clever, very brilliant, miracles, flowing. Everybody's getting saturated. Everything's moving like that. And he's teaching on the glory, the glory, the glory, which I spoke about Sunday, which was prophetic. God spoke to me Tuesday, two days later, he begins the conference, and that's his text for the whole week, Isaiah 61, 2, and 3. And then went to some other verses, which I also quoted on Sunday in the video. It's pinned to the top of the page where I talked about verse 10. And he went to that on the last night and made a, uh, 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 the sons of foreigners will build your walls. Talking about international blessings, international wealth. And he started talking about these things, realms and the millions of dollars. I was like, ah, there's my friend. That's my friend. Because anybody that's in the high glory, more times than not, they're tremendous proponents of prosperity. Now some people may not get into it from the realm of teaching, but they sure do believe it, you know, personally. Like Reinhard Bonnke, I, I met him a couple times, he prayed for me also. Very powerful encounter I had with him many, many years ago, back in the 90s. And uh, he, um, he wouldn't teach nothing about finance, never would touch the subject, didn't care. If people asked him, he got this revelation about finances, and one man of God challenged him and says, Brother Reinhardt, that's such a powerful revelation. Are you going to teach that to the people in the body of Christ? He jumped back and said, absolutely not. Because he felt like his calling was only about 
evangelism. And he was true to it till the day he went to heaven. I had a vision, a, a prophetic dream, and I saw Reinhardt look like a very young man, which he didn't because now he's in his almost 80 years old. And he got a bit disfigured at the end because he had some battle with something. And, you know, he didn't look like a young man for sure. And I saw him as a very young, handsome man, like when he was in his 30s or 40s. That's how he looked in the vision. And he was standing there like expressionless with a suit. And then I heard my mother's voice come from around. I, when I woke up, I thought, wait a minute, my mother's not on the earth. What was she doing there? She was coming around to this other room and I was there and I got to see her. And then before I could talk to her, you know, the thing shifted. But Reinhard Ponky was standing there like this. I said, <coughs> I'm sure it's his time to cross over. And I told everybody, I made a recording. Within a week after I made that video, Reinhardt departed. I also had the same vision for Oral Roberts. I saw him standing at the back of a building and I was ministering with Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn was friendly with him and Benny Hinn asked me to speak in the dream and I was preaching and Benny was there and Oral Roberts was standing at the back of the building like, again, that expressionless look on his face and he had all his Indian regalia on like the way an American Indian because he's American Indian descent he was dressed in that and he was standing against the wall like like frozen like statuesque like and 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 with expressionless and I said ah I know what it means and I had the same dream about Ryan Harbach just when they were about to to pass over But men that were true to their callings and walked in great blessing, the great blessings of God. So, so I, 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 to, to tie this together with the message here, it's all in the flow. How do you get anything big done? By remaining with small people? And looking around your environment? Look outside the house where you are, you see people standing around doing nothing. Are they helping you? They're hindering you. You see people even of your own tribe or family or environment or whatever, are they helping you? So you have to reach out and connect with the anointing. In, this, in these two books, this one's going to be expanded, The Laws of Success. And this one, Prophetic Keys of Successful Living, is going to reprint by our beloved bishop, Connection. And the stuff in this book will change your life, but you've got to reach for it and get it. There'll also be e-books. There will be e-books also. And... Uh, It's me on the beach there. You chose it as a book cover. I don't know if it's the best one to use, but I like it because that's on South Beach in Miami. <laughs> this one, I don't know where it was. Africa somewhere. And this is another of oh, the original teaching, which was the or live under the anointing, which was the origin for this book. So we'll also look for that video again to... Uh, Release, re-release. This one is all different topics of things about your life, categories of life and how to be successful in them. Very powerful. Breathe by the Holy Ghost. So without, without the blessing, without the fire, without the glory, how, how are you gonna progress to anything great? You can't. Unless you're just going to work in the natural by a gifting that you have. Maybe God's put the touch upon you to do something yourself, I'm sure. <clears throat> Part of that applies in life. But there's a grace to help you run the race. And it's upon those that are vessels of glory, that are carriers of the light and the fire and the presence of God like we see here in Isaiah 60. Many are stuck. Many are bound. Many are oppressed. Many haven't been able to break through because they, 
They're not connected correctly. Not just in the church. You say, well, I'm part of the body of Christ. I go to this church and I know some other saints and we're friendly. And No, I'm not talking about that. That's not enough. That won't help you enough. You have to tap the spiritual grace of the glory and you have to know it when you see it. Now, another thing I want to say, what I was talking about regrets and feelings of lost time is because sometimes people look at somebody who has no intention of honoring them. And you can't do that. The principle is from the word. Jesus went where he was celebrated, Capernaum, not where he was merely tolerated, Nazareth, Mark chapter 6. He could there, not wouldn't, he wanted to, he tried. He, the scripture does says he laid his hands, he still prayed for people, but not much happened. And the Spirit of the Lord just drove him on to the place where there was celebration and the outpouring happened. So wherever the outpouring is happening, that's where we need to be and push ourselves to be all the time. This is revelations concerning, regarding spiritual covering and divine connections and divine relationships. Volume 4. I'm Thomas Matthew the fourth. More later. Get out of being stuck. Connect with the grace. It'll help you run the race. Thank you for being my partner. You can do it with the links on the heading of the titles. And sow your seed if you're tithing. If you need bank information for a larger thing, you want to send something by bank wire, you can do that. Use the links on how to sow. If you have any creative thing that you want to do or something that you feel the Lord's telling you, write me a message. I'll get it and I'll respond and we'll communicate. I'm praying for you, especially for my partners and all the people around the world that are tuned in to be empowered by the combustive power and glory of connection with divine relationships and great anointing. In Jesus' mighty name, be blessed, my friend, and I'll talk to you later.